Trebania. I'm Durbin. I'm Laura. And we are going to do a spoiler talk for a series of unfortunate events. The Netflix one, not the Jim Carrey movie. Yes, so fair warning. Yes. Spoilers yes. ahead. We might do our best to skirt around spoilers. We'll but, just hit a couple of the big ones. But this is a spoiler talk. And when you binge a show, even if it's only eight episodes, it's really hard to not spoil yes. it. So my wife, let's start with you. What is your history with these Lemony Snicket books? So I had not read them before a couple months ago. We bought the series. He'd read them back in the day. About 10 years ago. Um, and so and he really wanted to read them again because we saw this was coming out. And honestly, we thought Neil Patrick Harris would be a great Count Olaf. Or he did. I was super excited about so, it. So I'm like, okay. I went and I started reading them. I'm, I'm actually three and a half books in. So <laughs> I didn't finish because the first series of a Fortune Events season. series season. season. Yes, there it yes. is. Sorry. Um, it's only the first four books. So now I know how the fourth book ends, but that's okay. Sort of. It was a bit, I mean, it was the same and different at the same time. But anyway, we'll get more into that. Like she said, kind of my, my thing with it is I read the books about 10 years ago and I thought these books were freaking fantastic. And here's the thing that's, that you and I were wondering out loud to each other while we were watching it. Mm -hmm. So if you've never read the books and you watched the show, I'd love to know your reaction to it yes. because in terms of its spirit, in terms of its wording with uh, what's his face. Can't think what his real yeah. name is either. But this, this guy plays Lemony Snicket, who's basically the narrator, which is the voice you get as you're reading the book. And there's several places in the book where it'll stop mid chapter and be like, the next things are gonna happen are unfortunate and terrible. If you're thinking this will have a happy ending, put this book down and imagine that A, B, and C happened. Okay, good. But if you're still here, then you're here for the unhappy ending. Yeah. And so it does all those little warnings to try to get you to stop reading. And, and so, that was fun in the movie. And, I really yeah, thought that was a yeah, fun little movie. In the movie. show, I thought it was cool how they brought him in. But I'm just curious, is like people who have never read it, who how don't know... How are they going to think about yeah, who this? who don't know the language of it, who don't know the weird Tim Burton-esque goofy world that even the book describes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, makes you wonder, how are they going to... But honestly, I just thought it was so fun. I will say, because not having read the second half of the fourth book... Um, I kind of enjoyed the second half of the fourth episode better too okay. because I didn't know what was going to happen. And because uh, the hard part is when you read a book and a TV show, you see a lot of the differences. Now, I feel like they did a great job, you know, translating the books to movies. And like there's little things that they skirted around and they changed and you could tell they had to do that because it just doesn't make sense yeah. in the television world. But um, I just, I, I actually enjoyed not knowing. And so I'm contemplating if I should read the rest of the books because before the series, uh, the next two seasons come out, or if I should hold off? It's a good philosophical question because having reread the first four books, there was a lot that I forgot. So like, I already forget how, it's only 13 books long and I already forget how the whole series wraps up. But reading the first four books again, I just remembered how much I love this, but going back and watching the, the Netflix show, there are differences, and I wouldn't say they're major differences, but there are things like, well, wait a minute, so. wait a minute, Stefano's supposed to, it didn't, it didn't yeah. unfold this way. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about, what, 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 what about that they're allergic to peppermint? She threw it in the trash can. What, how are they going to do that? So yes. like, there were a couple things where it's like, wait a minute, you changed up the order. Like, how are we going to fix this? But they did. And what I like so much about this, and I think the one that had the most differences was the miserable mill. Like when they the got. The fourth one? Yeah, when they, so it's eight episodes. So the and seventh and eighth two episode. Two parts to cover each book. And so when you get to the seventh and eighth episode, I think The Miserable Mill had the most differences. But even for it having the most differences, it wasn't like when you watch Percy Jackson and they... Oh, it's completely different. Yeah, and they utterly ruined where yeah. they could go next. No, no, no. It this wasn't one was, ruined at all. This one was extremely careful to stay true to the heart, to stay true to the major plot points, and to keep everything on track. And, and I felt like in watching this, nothing derailed from the story, nothing derailed for what's going to happen in the future. The thing that was interesting is, so I'm through the first four books, and we're going to venture in a little spoiler territory right now. In the first four books... Everything feels like it's just a tragedy, and it's this... It's just about the kids. You don't yeah, know any other and, story. And it's this greedy relative, Count, Count Olaf, yeah. who's just greedy for their money and trying to get their money. Mm -hmm. It's later in the book series, you find that they're all, like, spies. They're part of this group called VFD. They have enemies. They, they do all kinds of crazy things. And then it looks back, and you see things how they added up to that. But in this show, it was interesting because they started mixing all of that in in just this season. Yeah, and which I, totally threw me off because I haven't yeah. read the books and I know I know very little about them. Yeah. So it's like, for me, I'm like, 
what is going on with this? And then I look at Chris, I'm like, are his parents still alive? Yeah. Because you have uh, Kobe Smulders and Will Arnett yeah. as the mother Job and- and Robin yeah. from How I Met Your Mother. As the, as the mother and father, and that's what it says in the you know credit scene, the mother and father, and you're like, I don't think their parents are still alive. And so that, go ahead, you're what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say like, so at first I was kind of worried about all that stuff with, uh, with Will Arnett and Kobe Smulders. And I was like, but that's not true to the books because if I'm remembering the books correctly, the parents are dead and they never ever see the parents again. Mm -hmm. But then I, I felt like the show wrote it well and it started to get me curious about it. Even if I'm watching this going- but Did we miss something? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, this has nothing to do with the books, but this is really, I like, I was we so- want them to get I was so interested. Back. It added this whole extra layer of tension and then major spoiler alert, it was the greatest fake out I have ever seen. Yeah. They were the parents of another set of three children. But the way they cut it together, the way they brought it together. You thought it was their kid. It was, and it was so true to the spirit of the books because it was so depressing when it came together. Like it was this moment of hope and triumph and everything's building to this and it was a false victory and you're just like, <gasps> no, their parents really are dead. Yeah. So that really, oh! For those of you who have not seen or read the books, that will really stink. Yes. <laughs> Which will just add to the series of unfortunate events that occur <laughs> in this show. <laughs> but see, again, that's one of the things that was so, if not true to the letter of the books, true to the spirit of the books. Yes. And it was just so good how they did all that. The Jim Carrey movie, what they did was they took the first three books and crammed them into one movie and all that resulted in was rushing through what was truly good and fun about mm -hmm. the series. And I like what this is doing, two episodes per book, and really taking the time to do what is good and fun They're about the series. They're making it good. I yeah. mean, it's, it is, it's like basically each book is a movie. That's kind of what it's like. Yeah. You know, two episodes is about an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. And so, so far, I'm really, I mean, we binged it in like a, two days. Yeah, we watched And that's like only because we have company over. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have finished it yesterday. in one day. I mean, <laughs> but it's it's only eight episodes, so it's just so cool. And then I can't wait for the next season where they're going to pick up with the fifth book, I'll Stay Our Academy, yeah. which I haven't read that in a long time. So I'm looking forward to diving back into the book. So I, I don't know. What did you think of, um, all I could think is to call him Barney Stinson. I know. Neil Patrick, Neil Patrick Harris. Harris. What did you think of Neil Patrick okay. Harris? For those of you who have watched How I Met Your Mother, I really feel like uh, all of the things with the playbook, all the different characters Barney Stinson yes. played, Yes! That was an audition <laughs> to be Count Olaf. Yeah. Because the entire time I'm watching this, I'm like, it's Count, it, Count Olaf is one of Barney Stinson's characters. Yep. I'm like, I just, and each <laughs> character he played, I'm like, Barney Stinson. I'm like, I could see it. I'm like, so great casting. Yeah. I just, I feel like he's Count Olaf. I mean, it was, it was great. Yep. For that. I, I, I agree. I, I have nothing extra to add. I just really liked Neil Patrick Harris in that role. I thought he was hilarious. I liked the way they portrayed the three children because I felt like how they looked and how they acted is what I pictured reading the book. Yeah. I, the CGI with Sunny, I mean, because Sunny's a real baby and then sometimes you see her CGI yeah. and it goes back and forth probably so they can get the facial expressions right and the different things. Plus it works for the next seasons when it needs to stay a baby. Yeah. And so <laughs> overall it was pretty well done, but there are a couple spots where I just felt... Mm. But see, for me, that didn't bother me so much because the whole show had that unique Tim Burton feel to it. That it kind does. of animated but real world which it needs abstract to abstract feel which helped me when sony was more sony when sunny <laughs> was more animated because it just kind of felt the it felt gosh i can't talk it it had the same feel as I the know, rest and, of this world and now i'm just uh realizing her name's sunny and her life's not sunny oh yeah <laughs> that's a little dramatic irony for a you a little dramatic irony. dramatic irony a term here which means that's basically what you're going to get in the movie. It's good yeah, times. Yeah, I couldn't think of a way <laughs> to define movie, it here. Not the movie, the TV show. But the TV show does a great job. And I loved the Lemony Snicket narrator guy. Yes. And they brought him in at just the right points. And it was great because if you have read the books, That's you will the, love it like. because it is the narration from the books. Yeah. Bringing in the fun that was in that narration, which is half the fun of the books. And if you haven't read the books, I still think you'll find it fun just because of the different ways he interrupts the action and steps into the scene. Mm -hmm. It's I just think it's so well done. Um... What would you rate this show overall? I would give it a B plus. I really did enjoy it. I would probably watch it again, like especially if somebody else wanted to see it and I'm there. But um, there was just a couple of little like um, idiosyncrasies that I just had 
a hard time connecting with. I did have a hard time pulling Barney Stinson and Count Olaf separate <laughs> in a lot of the areas, which, um, so I just felt like he was doing what he does best, which is fine. But, um, I, I had a good time. It was a good show. I would recommend it definitely. And I am looking forward to the future seasons. So I'm looking forward to diving back into the books. I do agree with you. There are parts where I couldn't separate Barney Stinson, but I thought even where I couldn't separate him from Barney Stinson, it was still fun. It really mm. added to that character, and I loved it every time Count Olaf showed up somewhere else in disguise with all his goofy characters. I just thought that was so great. And how great. obvious it was that it's him, but But it shows you, know. you how dumb adults are, that we just want to fit everything in our own little world and have it go our way. And just we can't believe the... Uh, yeah obscene <laughs> yes i'm giving this show an a minus i just for me it was just so fun and there were places i was getting nervous because it's like you're deviating you're devi you brought it back home you brought it back home so there were just some places where I, I was a little nervous but it came together for me and i thought it was a really fun show which got me fired up to continue rereading the books i'm on book number five myself and i got a year to get through the next four I, books see, it so. didn't get me fired to finish the book, so that's where I'm. I'm wondering. She wants so that's another to... reason why it's a little lower. I like the surprise. Yeah. Of the TV so she show. wants to hold off from reading the books because so you know you don't want to watch the show anticipating. Wait, wait, what are they doing? Well, you're okay. You're back. You're back. So yeah. I get. I get it. I. What do you think? In the comments, if you read the books and watched the show, what are your thoughts on the show? And answer her question. Is it worth it to hold off finishing the books until the show is done? So oh, she nobody's going to say that. Everybody says the books are better than the TV show, and that's why I want to watch the TV show before the books. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Just, you know, let us know what you thought of the show in the comments. Yeah. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button, become a Durbanian, and next to the subscribe button is this little bell. Click that bell. Get that notified. way you're notified the moment something and drops. You never know when some crazy trailer is going to come out and I have to do a trailer reaction because yep. I never know when it's going to happen. And or all the my... next time we're going to binge a show that just came out. So hit that little bell and like and share this video. I'm Durbin. I'm Laura. Thank you for checking out Durbania. <laughs>